Good afternoon, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. May I request everyone to please settle down as we are about to start our Eucharistic celebration. Please put yourselves in the presence of the Lord and let us pray the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The right of dedication of our altar. Through his death and resurrection, Christ became the true and perfect temple of the new covenant and gathered together a people to be his own. This holy people is the church that is the temple of God, built of living stones, 
where the Father is worshipped in spirit and in truth. We are the dwelling place of God, and the building is our house. Rightly then, from early times, church has also been the name given to the building in which the Christian community gathers to hear the word of God, to pray together, to receive the sacraments, and to celebrate the Eucharist. Because the church is a visible building, it stands as a special sign of the pilgrim church on earth and reflects the church dwelling in heaven. When a church is erected as a building destined solely and permanently for assembling the people of God and for carrying out sacred functions, it is fitting that it be dedicated to God with a solemn rite. And so, with our local ordinary, the most reverend Florentino G. Lavarias Didi, Archbishop of San Fernando, Pampanga, and the whole parish community of the Lord's Transfiguration, our sponsors and guests, we are all invited to participate in this joyous occasion of the dedication of our parish church. In thanksgiving, let us now worship the Father in spirit and in truth as we listen to the word of God, dedicate this church, and partake of the Eucharist. Please stand for the entrance procession and entrance hymn. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, as we solemnly dedicate this house, let us humbly call upon the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, with which 
we are to be sprinkled as a sign of repentance and a remembrance of baptism and by which the new walls and altar will be purified. May the Lord support us with his grace so that docile to the spirit whom we have received, we may remain faithful in his church. O God, through whom every creature comes forth into the light of life, you accompany all people with such great love that not only do you nourish them with fatherly care, but you mercifully cleanse them of their sins with the dew of charity and constantly lead them back to Christ the head. For in your merciful plan, you establish that those who descend as sinners into the sacred waters to die with Christ should rise free from guilt and be made his members, heirs with him to eternal reward. Sanctify, therefore, with your blessing this water you have created that sprinkled on us and on the walls of this church. It may be a sign of the cleansing water of salvation in which we have been washed in Christ and made the temple of the Spirit. Grant that with all our brothers and sisters who will celebrate the divine mysteries in this church, we may come at last to the heavenly Jerusalem through Christ our Lord. Amen.
May God, the Father of mercies, dwell in this house of prayer, and by the grace of the Holy Spirit, cleanse us who are the temple where he dwells. Amen. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, pour out your grace upon this place and extend the gift of your help to all who call upon you, that the power of your word and of the sacraments may strengthen here the hearts of all the faithful. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. The presentation of the lectionary.
May the word of God resound always in this building to open your, you for you the mystery of Christ and to bring about your salvation in the church. Amen. A reading from the book of Nehemiah. Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, which consisted of men, women, and those children old enough to understand, standing at one end of the open place that was before the water gate. He read out of the book from daybreak till midday in the presence of the men, the women, and those children old enough to understand. And all the people listened attentively to the book of the law. Ezra the scribe stood on a wooden platform that had been made for the occasion. He opened the scroll so that all the people might see it for he was standing higher up than any of the people. And as he opened it, all the people rose. Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people, their hands raised high, answered, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and prostrated themselves before the Lord their faces to the ground. Ezra read plainly from the book of the law of God, interpreting it so that all could understand what was read. Then Nehemiah, that is, his excellency, and Ezra, the priest scribe, and the Levites who were instructing the people said to all the people, Today is holy to the Lord your God. Do not be sad and do not weep, for all the people were weeping as they heard the words of the law. He said further, Go, eat rich foods and drink sweet drinks and allot portions to those who had nothing prepared, for today is holy to our Lord. Do not be saddened this day, for rejoicing in the Lord must be your strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the book of Revelation. The angel spoke to me, saying, I, John, saw a new heaven and a new earth. The former heaven and the former earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. I also saw the holy city, a new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. I heard the loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, God's dwelling is with the human race. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people. And God himself will always be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there shall be no more death or mourning, wailing or pain, for the old order has passed away. The one who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We now stand to honor the gospel. My dwelling place shall be with them, says the Lord, and I will be their God, and they will be my people. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, If you bring your gift to the altar, and there recall that your brother has anything against you, leave your gift there at the altar. Go first and be reconciled with your brother and then come and offer your gift. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please remain standing. Please be seated. Tuwing ako po'y, tuwing ako po'y nagbe-bless o nagko-consecrate ang altars and dedication of the church, I always remember this story about two brothers, yung dalawang magkapatid po, na sila ay naulila, at sa kanilang paglaki sila ay nanatili yung kanilang pagrerespeto, pagmamahalan. Hanggang dumating ang araw na yung isa sa kanila, yung panganay ay nag-asawa. And they were left uh, a two-hectare uh, piece of land, agrarian. At 
nagtatanim po sila ng palay. At pagkatapos nun, ang ginawa, no? ginawa isang gabi, uh, yung panganay, napag- nakapag-isip-isip siya. Sabi ng ganun, parang hindi yata fair na yung hati kami ng kapatid ko. Kasi siya walang asawa ako meron, meron ako mga anak, they can take care of me. Siya wala siyang pamilya, siguro mas marami yan sa kanya. Kaya secretly, in the evening, doon sa kanyang uh, uh, lalagyan ng palay, so paggabi, siya'y nagdadala secretly doon sa bahay ng kanyang kapatid ng uh, sakusakong palay. Tapos yun naman bunso, nakapag-isip-isip naman din siya, parang hindi yata fair na hati kami ng kapatid ko. Kasi ako lang mag-isa, wala naman akong pamilya, siya may pamilya, may anak, dapat mas marami sa kanya. Kaya ang ginawa niya, paggabi, siya rin nagdadala ng palay doon sa kanyang kapatid. Ito ang nangyayari. Hanggang isang araw, no, sila'y nagtatagpo. Parehong may dalang palay. At ang magkatagpo sila, doon na nalaman kung bakit hindi kumukunti yung kanilang palay. Dahil pala sila'y nagbibigayan. At binaba nila yung palay at niyakap nila ang bawat isa. And some people so what happened. Kaya nga isang araw, nung sila'y magplano, nagagawa ng isang chapel, ang pinili nila ay yung lugar na yon. Kung saan yung dalawang magkapatid, they embrace each other. Because that is a holy place. Because love what ex- was experienced on that place. Isang banal na lugar. Ewan ko po kung uh, dumaan din dito yung magkapatid na yun. <laughs> At nandito dito tayo, itong rebate, itong ating church, at kinoconsecrate natin, dinededicate natin ngayon. At ang inihingi natin sa Panginoon, nawa ito'y maging banal na lugar. And when we speak of kabanalan, especially in terms of God, kabanalan is equal to God's love. Kaya nga po, ako'y nagninilay, Panginoon, what will I share sa Uh, celebration on the ninth day of April ito. Isa po sa lumabahan sa aking pagdarasal ay yung bakit natin ginawa o ni-renovate itong church na ito. At yung lumabas eh, because we want to remain in love. Totoo nga po ba yun? Do you want to remain in love? Parang hindi yata. <laughs> so gusto po nating maging kasangkapan ito upang ang bayan ng Diyos ay manatili sa kanyang pag-ibig. Manatili sa kanyang pagmamahalan. Manatili sa kabanalan sa pamagitan ng pagsasabuhay nila ng pag-ibig ng Diyos. Kanina, in the opening prayer, ang dinasal natin, nawa sa lugar na ito, Our hearts will be strengthened by the Word of God and the sacraments. Sa simbahan po, sa church, meron tayong lugar na kung saan pinapahayag ang salita ng Diyos. At meron tayong altar kung saan sinasagawa natin yung huling hapunan. During this dedication, of course, the prominence is given to the altar. We will anoint. I will anoint the altar. Dahil yun ay simbolo ni Kristo. Siya ang mukha ng pag-ibig ng Diyos. At si Kristo rin ang magpapanatili sa atin sa pag-ibig. Ang lugar na ito ay nihiling natin na manahan dito ang kanyang spirito upang mapanatili tayo sa pagmamahalan at pag-ibig. Maganda po ito simbahan. No? Nagandahan po ba kayo? Maganda po ba? Okay. 
isang araw, merong isang mayaman. Bumili siya ng napakagandang uh, top of the line na uh, ano ito? Plancha. So, pag niya, very eager na gamitin niya. Kaya lang hindi umiinit. No? Plancha. Iniwan niya doon. Tapos, nag, uh, nagmumura siya. Niloko ako, et cetera, et cetera. So, nandun siya. Iniwan niya doon. Tapos, after some time, nabigla siya. Yung kanyang house help, si Inday, nandun pumipito pa siya. At siya, ay naman blad siya. Sabi niya, Inday, bakit sa akin, hindi ko na, na, na ano, hindi, hindi nag-work yan. Ano bang ginawa mo? Tapos sabi ni Inday, binasa ko po yung direksyon. <laughs> binasa ko po yung direksyon. So, napakaganda nitong ating church. Pero wag natin kalimutan makinip sa direksyon. Basahin yung direksyon. Isa buhay ang direksyon. At saan natin kukunin yun? Sa pakikinig, sa salita ng Diyos, sa ating pagtanggap kay Kristo sa banal na komunyon. Alam ko po, isa sa pinakamahirap ngayon na gawin ay ang makinig. And to be silent. I think this is the reason why Pope Francis and recently, last year, the bishops who joined the Synod They were promoting this need of silence and listening. Even yung pong kinundak natin yung synodal sessions, consultations in our parishes, yung proposal po ay yung mahalin natin yung pagiging silent and also to be always listening. Sa pakikinig, dyan natin makikilala ang pag, yung pagpapahalaga sa kapwa, sa sarili, at sa Panginoon. Narinig po natin kanina sa Ebanghelyo na kung saan sinabi sa atin at sa mga disipulo ng Panginoon, when you are offering something to the altar, when you are offering your gift, but then you realize ang kapatid mo ay meron siyang sama ng loob sa iyo, well, iwanan mo muna ang yung gift and be reconciled to him or to her. Ano pong ibig sabihin nito? Siyempre, let us not take this literally. Halimbawa po ako, may mga kapatid ako, halimbawa, nasa states, mag-aeroplano po muna ako doon <laughs> para makipag-reconcile. Ang ibig lang sabihin dito, when we come to the Lord to be reconciled, to be united to Him, let us not forget, it is also presupposed that we must be united to one another. Because when we gather, especially in this place, let us not forget, we are God's family. We are God's children. Kanina po, sa umpisa, nakita nyo, binaspasan, yung lugar, kayo, pati po ako. Reminding us of our common dignity. We are all children of God. That's why when we gather here, we gather as children of God. And God is delighted when, we, when He sees us gathered in His love. He's delighted to see us. We are His children. That is why when we enter this place, let us always be reminded of that. Let us set aside paminsan-minsan yung ating mga labels and come in this church and see one another as a brother, as a sister, as someone filled with the presence of God. And challenge din po yun sa amin, sa amin pangunguna, sa ating community, Last uh, Christmas, na sabi ko sa mga kapatid na pare, the temptation at times when we gather and wherein we preside in the gathering ay yung clericalism. Para kami special children 
kayo second class lang. But when we gather in the spirit of the grace that we are asking this, this moment for this building, we are all children of God. Nagkataon lang obispo ako. Nagkataon lang mga pari kami. But it doesn't mean special kami. Second class kayo. Sorry na lang kayo. No. That when we gather, we gather in His love. And it is His love that gives value and dignity to each and every one of us. As we continue with the celebration, let us pray for that grace that whenever we enter this building, whenever we come together to worship and to celebrate, especially the mysteries of the Paschal Mystery, may we always be reminded that we are children of God. And I'm praying for this grace that God will continuously give you the grace of restlessness. Ano pong ibig sabihin nun? Sana ang Panginoon paminsan-minsan gawin niya kanyo restless. How? When we come together, kuminsan, ma-feel mo you are restless dahil minsan nakaupo ka doon tapos may poor kadadating hindi siya nakaupo, hindi ka mapalagay. Because your heart tells you mahalaga yung kapatid na yun. Do not ignore the feeling. Continue being aware of the feeling. Maybe na natili kang naupo with that restlessness. Okay, stay with that restlessness. Because God will give you the grace in His time para i-address mo yung restlessness na yun. Ang mahirap, kapag hindi mo na pinansin, at ikaw o ako ay magiging manhid. That is the opposite of love. When we become indifferent and manhid. That is why in this place, may God from time to time give you the grace para sa ganon madaman ninyo yung pagiging restless. Okay? Mahirap pag parang kompleto na yung buhay. Pag kompleto na, well, sabi ng Panginoon, eh, long staying ka na, alis ka na dyan. So, our life is always incomplete. When we come together in this place to worship the Lord, nawa, makita natin yun, no? yung restlessness. The desires of our heart, kung minsan, ito'y malayo sa buhay na ating pinapahayag. So, let us be aware of that. And as a good Lord, if the restlessness is this much, I hope when we gather here, kumukunti, kumukunti, as we address the call of God through our restlessness. Please pray for me. Pray for the priest, especially among Saul who will lead you, our community in this place. Nawa, tunay nga, kami magkikasangkapan para sa ganun, mapanatili natin ang pagmamahalan. Amen. Please stand. Together now, let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Amen. We now come to the rite of dedication proper. It will begin by calling the aid of the triumphant church, the litany of the saints, as the expression of the church confidence in the intercession of the saints and an experience of the communion between the church of the heavenly Jerusalem and the church on her earthly pilgrim journey. Dearly beloved, let us pray to God, the Almighty Father, who makes the hearts of the faithful into spiritual temples for himself. And may the supplication of the saints, our brothers and sisters, be joined with our voices. Please remain standing for the litany. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Mary and Joseph, Michael and all angels, Anna, Joachim, Elizabeth, Elijah, Moses, John the Baptist, Isaac, Sarah, and Abraham, Jacob, Joseph, Samuel, Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, all you holy men and women pray for us. Peter, Paul, and Andrew. James, John, and all apostles, Mary, Magdalene, Veronica, Barnabas, Matthias, Stephen, Philip, and Cornelius, Prisca, and Aquila, Timothy, and Titus, Linus, Cletus, and Clement. Pope John the Twenty Third, Pope John Paul the Second. of Loyola, Dominic and Catherine, Paul and Criteria, Thomas and Martin, Catherine of Alexandria, Lucy, Agatha and Agnes. Saints Claire and Francis, Scholastica and Benedict, Therese, John and Teresa, Augustine and Monica, Teresa.
Lorenza of Calcutta, Lorenzo de Manila, Pedro Calonso, Pedro de Zuniga. from all evil, from every sin, from everlasting death, by your incarnation, by your death and resurrection. Govern and protect your church. Keep the Pope and your ministers faithful to your service. Bless us, your people. Bless this holy church. Consecrate it to your worship. Strengthen us and keep us in your holy service. Lord, give new life. To your chosen by the grace of baptism, O Jesus, Son of the Living God, send your Spirit in its fullness on your sons and your daughters who believe and profess you. Mercifully accept our petitions, we pray, O Lord, through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, so that this building, to be dedicated to your name, may be a house of salvation and grace, where the Christian people, gathering as one, will worship you in spirit and in truth, and be built up in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Deposition of the Holy Relics of the Saints The Holy Relics, fragments from the bones of St. Paul the Hermit, Martyr, St. Kiteria, Virgin and Martyr, a piece of stone from Mount Tabor, the mountain where our Lord Jesus Christ was transfigured, will now be deposited permanently to the altar of sacrifice.
His Excellency will now consecrate the church and the altar through the prayer of dedication. The prayer of dedication is a sign of the intention to dedicate the church to the Lord for all times and a petition for His blessing. O God, sanctifier and ruler of your church, it is right for us to celebrate your name in joyful proclamation. For today, your faithful people desire to dedicate to you solemnly and for all time this house of prayer where they worship you devoutly, are instructed by the word, and are nourished by the sacrament. This house brings to light the mystery of the church which Christ made holy by the shedding of his blood, so that he might present to her to him he might present her to himself as a glorious bride, a virgin resplendent with the integrity of faith, a mother made fruitful by the power of the Spirit. Holy is the church, the chosen vine of the Lord, whose branches fill the whole world, and whose tendrils born on the wood of the cross reach upward to the kingdom of heaven. Blessed is the church, God's dwelling place with a human race, a holy temple built of living stones, standing upon the foundation of the apostles with Christ Jesus, the chief cornerstone. Exalted is the church, a city set high on a mountain for all to see, resplendent to every eye, and the unfading light of the Lamb, and resounding with the sweet hymn of the saints. Therefore, O Lord, we beseech you, graciously pour forth from heaven your sanctifying power upon this church and upon this altar to make this favor, this forever a holy place with a table always prepared for the sacrifice of Christ. Here, with the flood of divine grace, overwhelm human offenses so that your children, Father, being dead to sin, may be reborn to heavenly life. Here, may your faithful gather around the table of the altar, celebrate the memorial of the Paschal Mystery, and be refreshed by the banquet of Christ's Word and His body. Here, may the joyful offering of praise resound with human voices, joined to the song of angels, and unceasing prayer rise up to you for the salvation of the whole world. Here, may the poor find mercy, the oppressed attain true freedom, and all people be clothed with the dignity of your children until they come exultant to the Jerusalem which is above. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. The anointing of the altar and the walls of the church. The anointing of the altar makes the altar a symbol of Christ, the anointed one, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit, constituting him the high priest, so that on the altar of his body he might offer the sacrifice of his life for the salvation of all. The anointing of the church signifies that it is given over entirely and perpetually to Christian worship, in keeping with the liturgical tradition, there are 12 anointings. We now anoint this altar and this building. May God in His power make them holy, visible signs of the mystery of Christ and His beloved Church.
please be seated. The incensation of the altar and the church. The burning of incense on the altar signifies that Christ's sacrifice ascends to God as an odor of sweetness and also signifies that the people's prayers rise up pleasing and acceptable, reaching the throne of God. Please stand. Let our praise, O Lord, like incense in your sight. And as this house is filled with a pleasing fragrance, so let your church be fragrant with the aroma of Christ.
Please be seated. The covering of the altar signifies that it is the Lord's table at which all God's people joyously meet to be refreshed with the divine food.
the lighting of the altar and the church. The lighting of the altar reminds us that Christ is a light to enlighten the nations. His brightness shines out in the church and through it in the whole human family. Please all stand. Let the light of Christ shine brightly in the church that all nations may attain the fullness of truth.
Please be seated.
May the brothers and sisters pray that your sacrifice and mine may be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. O Lord, may the gifts of your joyful church be acceptable to you, so that your people, gathering in this holy place, may come through these mysteries to everlasting salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly really right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in this visible house that you have let us build, and where you never cease to show favor to the family and pilgrimage to you in this place, you wonderfully manifest and accomplish the mystery of your communion with us. Here, you build up for yourself the temple that we are, and cause your church spread throughout the world to grow ever more and more as the Lord's own body, till she reaches her fullness in the vision of peace, the heavenly city of Jerusalem. And so, with the countless ranks of the blessed, in the temple of your glory, we praise you, we bless you, and proclaim your greatness as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing. And gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. We now proclaim the mystery of faith.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial with saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. We may confess an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance of you elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with you blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on his constant intercession, in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May, may this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis, our Pope, Florentino, our Archbishop, Pasciano, our Archbishop Emeritus, the Order of Bishops, Presbyters, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family who dedicate this church to you. May it be for your family house of salvation and a place for the celebration of your heavenly sacraments. Here may the gospel of peace resound and the sacred mysteries be celebrated so that your faithful, formed by the word of life and by divine grace, on their pilgrim way through the earthly city, may merit to reach the eternal Jerusalem. There in your compassion, O merciful Father, gathered yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. With love and gratitude in our hearts, we now call upon the loving Father as we all pray.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. As one family, let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are we who are invited to share in His life and in His mission. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
please stand. Let us pray. Through these holy gifts we have received, O oh Lord, we pray, instill in our minds an increase of your truth, so that we may constantly adore you in your holy temple and glory in your sight with all the saints. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please kneel.
Please be seated. May we call on our Vicar for Rain, Reverend Father Winifredo Santos, to read the act of dedication and blessing of our parish. Acta dedicationis et benedictionis. By the grace of God and the favor of the Holy Apostolic See, the Archbishop of San Fernando, Pampanga, Philippines, on the ninth day of April in the year of our Lord 2024, according to the rites of the Roman Catholic Church, solemnly dedicated and blessed the parish church of the Lord's Transfiguration Parish at LNS Subdivision, Angeles City, Pampanga, given this ninth day of April, in the year of our Lord, 2024. Signed, Florentino G. Labaria Sdidi, Archbishop. Signed, Reverend Father Danny Nakpil, Chancellor. We will now call on our parish coordinator, Sister Maria Evangeline Lociano, for her words of gratitude. To the Most Reverend Florentino Labarias, Archbishop of San Fernando, to the Most Reverend Pasiano Aniceto, Archbishop Emeritus of San Fernando, Reverend Father Winifredo Santos, the Vicar Foreign, Reverend Clergy of the Vic Vicariate of the Sacred Heart and the Archdiocese, to our Paris Priest, Reverend Father Mario Sol Gabriel, our distinguished guests, benefactors, parishioners, and friends of the parish. Good evening. In one of our pastoral meetings, Among Sol informed us that before leaving this parish, he dreams and wishes for a place for people to come more often, to enrich their spiritual lives, to attend services during Sundays, Christmas, and the Lenten season. Indeed, wish granted. Next is a question. How could we accommodate the people flocking to our church who stay outside in the parking area and under the trees just to listen to the word of God? How about renovating the church building? Wow, taas kilay kami. I say it's really difficult to renovate the church. Can we do it? He asked. He said, Come in, and we said, We can do it for the glory of God. Once Among Soul announced the plan of renovating the church building, parishioners and acquaintances of his started calling him up, asking how they could help in any ways. Lalakas kulub, G, sa sabi ni Among. So, the best part is we ask the contractor, parishioner, to help us with this project, tell him that we have no funds yet. Eya problema po ita. He said, gawan tayo. Thank you, Engineer Guapo and family. As time passes by, donations and pledges started coming here and abroad. 
miracles do happen, and the rest is history. In behalf of the parish community, we give our ultimate thanksgiving to the Blessed Trinity because of the merciful love, the reason we are here all gathered. To Archbishop Dong, our deepest gratitude for presiding this moment's liturgy and significant recognition where we stand, whether physically or spiritually, holds value beyond measure. To our Archbishop Emeritus Aposeto, that through your pastoral wisdom and grace, this parish was canonically erected to this very, 20, very day, 28 years ago, along with our first parish priest, then Monsignor Antonio del Rosario. To Among Sol, we know very well your journey the moment you were assigned here in the parish, the challenges and blessings you have received. The transition being the pastor, the COVID-19 pandemic, the roller coaster of emotions and hindrances during the construction of the church. You really are one brave soul, Among. Thank you and congratulations. For all of you, benefactors, friends, and fellow parishioners who are here sharing with us this milestone, I see smiles and looking up saying, I have been a part of this. And for those who didn't make it and have contributed much in any way, we share with you this success and blessing. Dakalpong salamat, King Aliwa Alang Sawa yung pamantabi, kay kami kay King Lord's Transfiguration Parish. After this, please join us for a simple program and dinner prepared by the parish community, especially for our dear clergy and guests at the San Antonio de Padua Hall. Thank you. Let us now hear the words of His Excellency, Most Reverend Pasciano D. Aniceto Didi, the Archbishop Emeritus of San Fernando. Sa akin minamahal na kapatid na Arsobispo, Most Reverend Florentino G. Labarias, ang uh, nag-dedicate at consecrate sa bagong simbahan nito, Lord's Transfiguration. Palakpakan po natin ang ating mahal na Arsobispo, Reverend Father Mar Mario Sol Gabriel, ang uh, nagtayo po nito with your support no, sa uh, beautiful Charge of the Transfiguration. Palapakan tayo, Father Saul. Ang aking mga kapatid na paring konselebrante sa ating Eucharistia, ang ating mga sponsors, supporters, Father uh, Engineer Peter Napomuseno, nakita ko nandito siya po siya, uh, King Minamal na kapatid sa Panginoon. Ang templo ay isang sagradong lugar sa gisag ng pagkakaisa at presensya ng Diyos sa isang bayan. And this is always the belief of the Old Testament Jews. Buhat ng panahon ni Solomon, David, umaharap sila ng isang gusali na dalawang manatiling permanente ang kabanan tipan equivalent to our blessed sacrament in the tabernacle. Pero lalong ma mahakaba, ma makahalugan ang pangalawang templo sa bagong testamento. Sabi ni Jesus, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. So he's referring to a pillar dimension of temple, not just a building, but the people of God, the kahal, the church. And uh, kayo po, tayo lahat, kasama ng Arsobis at mga Paris Peace, binubuo natin 
ang isang komunidad ng sumasangpalataya sa Diyos na makapangyarihan at uh, mapagmatawad, may kompasyon, may pagmamahal, mayroong mercy. At uh, tayo din ay patong buhay. We are living stones on the rock foundation of Jesus Christ. Because St. Paul tells us, Jesus is the cornerstone and foundation of the church with the apostles, no? also a secondary foundation stone. So, pag ito po ay isang panawagan sa atin na kailan magpakatatag, matibay, at tunay na babigay tayo ng suporta sa katatagan ng ating simbahan, sa pamamagitan ng ating buhay, buhay na uh, tunay na uh, malalim ang pananampalataya, patulungan sa ating mga kapatid, nagsusuporta sa mga manghihina, sa may uh, mga poor uh, sectors and those in the periphery of society. Sabi ka lang, Pope Francis, tayo lahat, we have to walk together in a synodal uh, walk with the poor, with the sick, with the homeless, those who have nothing to eat, those who cannot help themselves, we do not separate ourselves from the poor. We walk together in synodal manner, walking together, praying together, working together, mourning together, re repenting together, and giving a real adoration to uh, our Lord in the real presence at the tabernacle. Uh, congratulations to all the parishioners of the Lord's Transfiguration. Let us now stand no. and honor our Blessed Mother. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Kindly bow your hands and pray for God's blessing. May God, the Lord of heaven and earth, who has gathered you today for the dedication of this church, make you abound in heavenly blessings. Amen. May God, who has filled that all his scattered children be gathered in his Son, grant that you become his temple and the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
May you be made thoroughly clean, so that God may dwell within you, and you may possess with all the saints the inheritance of eternal happiness. Amen. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. We are given the privilege to case the altar. Pwede po kayong mag-line by two para makahalik sa altar. Yun pong gustong humalik sa ating altar na bagong blessed.